Hey guys, it's Spiros from The Self-Help Photographer. Today is the day we've got the full-on D7100, D7000, hands-on, review, show-off, face-off, punch-out, knock-down, drag-out. We're gonna figure out which camera is the one to choose. I wanna start with a very quick spec rundown between the two cameras. The D7100 has 24 megapixels, the D7000 is 16. The D7100 has a slightly larger 3.2 inch screen compared to the 3.3 inch screen on the D7000. The D7100 is 100 grams lighter. Actually, it's 95 grams lighter. Both cameras are weather sealed. Both of them have 100% viewfinder coverage. The D7100 has a stereo microphone. This is new, this is good. The D7000 has no stereo microphone. Both cameras shoot six frames per second in burst mode when shooting still photographs. The D7100 has 51 autofocus points with 15 cross type. The D7000 only has 39 autofocus points and only nine of those are cross type. The D7100 can record at 1080i, 60 frames per second and 50 frames per second. At 1080p, 30 frames per second, 25 frames per second, and 24 frames per second. At 720p, 60 frames per second and 50 frames per second. The D7100 can do 1080p, 24 frames per second, 720p, 30 frames per second, and 24 frames per second, and then a VGA mode at 640 by 424, 30 frames per second. So the D7100 also has full HDMI output from the camera. Okay, that's all the specs we're gonna talk about. Both of them have an APS-C sensor. I should mention that this is not a full frame camera. Both cameras are basically identical. The D7100 is an upgrade. It's a little bit lighter, as I mentioned, 95 grams. The buttons on the front are basically the same. On the back, things are a little bit different. You've got your directional pad basically in the exact same place that it was. On the D7000, as you can see in this photograph right here, the live view toggle is above that directional pad and in the center of that toggle is a button to turn on the recording for a video. When you flip that toggle, the D7000 drops right into picture taking mode in live view. And then if you wanna record a video, you just hit that record button and you're off and running. Now the D7100 is a little bit different. As you can see in this photograph here, that switch has been moved to underneath the directional pad. And it's not a record button in the middle anymore. Now the toggle switches you between video mode or photograph mode for live view. You hit the button to enter into live view mode and the record button is on the top of the D7100, which you can see in this photograph right here. And frankly, I think that's nice. I like the record button on top. The first thing I did to test the two cameras for image quality was run a straight ISO test. This was a controlled condition test. When looking at the results of the test, the quality between the two cameras is indistinguishable. They look identical. Now, this is a controlled test, and this was in low light. It was in a room with the door shut with a couple of fluorescent lights on. So it wasn't super bright, but it wasn't super dark either. It's the kind of light you could expect to find in your living room, for instance, if you have some overhead lights in your house. That's not a real world test. So I wanted to put it to a real world test. I took the D7000 and the D7100 and went to a bar and saw a band and I shot in some truly shitty light to test these cameras out. And let me tell you, in that light, the differences between the two became much more apparent. Now, before we go on, I have to say this. If you were hanging around my Facebook page this weekend, you saw a couple of test photos that I put up and they were dramatically different. But I realized afterwards, and I corrected this on the Facebook page, but I wanna make sure everybody knows, I realized afterwards that I had forgotten to change the white balance on the D7000, and that made a big difference. Now, I shoot everything in RAW, so it was no big deal for me to go into Lightroom and change the white balance from the D7000 shots to match the D7100. That changed things quite a bit. However, there are still differences between the two cameras. Now I'm gonna show you a couple pictures. The first one here is from the D7100. This was shot at f1.8 using that same AF uh, 50 millimeter lens. It was shot at 1 250th of a second and ISO 3200. And when you look at this 100% crop, 
of the photo, you'll see that while it's quite noisy, which is to be expected at 3200, the details are astonishingly good. You can see the detail of the lens, you can see the lips and the uh, saxophone reed, you can see the creases in the skin, you can see the light as it moves across his face back towards his neck and down. Very nice detail. I was really impressed, to be perfectly honest. I didn't expect this D7100 to perform this well because of these smaller pixels on this 24 megapixel sensor. The D7100 also handled the very high contrast and dynamic range of the scene very well. If you zoom out and look at the shot here, you'll see that we've got highlight areas that are a little bit blown out, but there's still good detail in there. There's still information there that shows you what's going on. Now let's compare that to the D6000. Same guy, same lighting condition, same shot. Well, almost exactly the same shot. I mean, the guy was playing saxophone, so he's moving around on me a little bit, but I got basically the exact same shot. Now the shot uh, the exposure was a little bit different. First of all, I shot this at ISO 1600. Okay, I shot it at f1.8 the same and 1 1 60th of a second, which is one third stop less light than the uh, D7100 shot. So that's something that we do need to consider. However, if we look at the shot, let's zoom in first of all and look at that same area of the face, 100% detail. Look at how little detail we have here. It's this muddy, contrasty, awful mess. And some people might say, well, that one third stop did this, but no, you could brighten this up by one third stop and you're still going to have a lot of mud and a lot of nasty detail in there. In fact, I did brighten it up in Lightroom just to see because I wanted to see what it looked like and it didn't make any improvements here, okay? Now, not only do you have this, total mud in the face, no, no gradation, no detail, no smoothness. When you pull this out and you look at the full shot, Look at how blown out the highlights are. The D7000 does not handle this situation very well. It's not handling the dynamic range. It's blowing out the highlights. It's totally muddying up the uh, shadows. I was frankly pretty disappointed at the performance of the D7000 in this particular shot. Now, another thing we got to talk about in this test was how well these cameras autofocused. And this is another area that the D7100 outperformed the D7000. It was much faster and more accurate to focus in this low light situation. I found the D7000 hunting quite a bit compared to the D7100. We also went out and I just did some kind of walking around, shooting during the day in an overcast day with not a lot of contrast and the results that I got in that situation were to be expected, which is that they both performed really well. Gave great image quality, I was shooting at ISO 100, various apertures depending upon the shot. Uh, nothing terribly exciting here, to be perfectly honest. When I went out, because I knew the D7100 performed better in low light, I was watching and looking to see how fast they would focus compared to each other. And during the day, the D7000 did a much better job. It was much faster and much more accurate. However, I did notice, because I was looking for it, that the D7100 was a little bit faster. And then I did some Sports testing. By sports, I mean ducks and geese that were flying around because uh, there wasn't any sports going on. But I was shooting for action to see how it performed in action. And the D7100, because of the superior autofocus system, outperformed the D7000. We also need to talk about the live mode shooting. I flipped into live mode to shoot some still photographs. And in this mode, the cameras both focused slower. We're not as quick to grab a subject. We're not as accurate at holding that subject and keeping the subject that I was looking for. In fact, both cameras had this annoying tendency to jump the focus square over to what it thought was the subject instead of focusing on the thing that I wanted. So then I'd have to use the directional pad to move the little square over to where I want and then I'd try to focus and the damn thing would jump over here again. That was really irritating. Uh, the D7100 in this mode was significantly better at focusing than the D7000 though. Now let's talk about the video on the D7000 and the D7100. And the first thing I want to say is that overall the movie mode is kind of clunky. They say that you have full manual control of settings while shooting for the D7100, but that is not entirely true. The D7100, just like the D7000, still has that aperture quirk, where you can, you can change the aperture using the dial on the camera. It'll actually show you the number is changing, 
but it will not change the actual aperture of the lens unless you exit out of the viewing mode, out of live view, and then go back into live view. That to me is just kind of annoying. I don't know why Nikon hasn't fixed that. It just, to me, it doesn't make any sense at all. Now there is a workaround to that. However, this requires that you have an AF lens that has a manual aperture ring on it. Because if you go into the menu and under the control option, you can change whether or not the aperture is controlled by the camera or by the aperture ring on the actual lens. And if you switch it to the aperture ring, then while, then while you're in video mode, you can change the aperture. All you gotta do is spin the dial on the ring. Now the upside is that it gives you that control. The downside is that clicking when you change the aperture dial, when you're handling and fumbling on the camera, if you're just recording using the onboard microphone, is going to be picked up by the video. So just not a very good solution overall. Now before I talk about how the video looked and the tests that I did and the video quality, let's just be clear that in terms, pure terms of the video file format that you're recording, the D7100 produces better quality video because you can capture full HD 1080p video at 30 frames per second. This is something the D7000 is simply not capable of do doing. In addition, you can go up to that 1080i and shoot 60 or 50 frames per second if you wanna do slow-mo stuff. The video tests I did were three types. One, I did a standard shoot in the middle of the day. It was an overcast day. It was very evenly and brightly lit with enough light to shoot at ISO 100. Then I went to a bar again because I was looking for a decently low light situation and I shot in a moderate low light situation to push the ISO and test that. And then I took and I went into an extremely low light situation to really push the ISOs and test what these cameras could do at low, low light for video mode. And what I found was in terms of the visual quality when you're watching the video and looking at it, at the daytime shot and at the moderate low light shot in the bar, the video is indistinguishable in terms of quality. Very similar to the still results, which is what I expected to see. Uh, when you push up to 2500 ISO, like I did in the bar when I did the test shoot there, both cameras exhibit noise. You're pushing the ISO, you're going to get noise. But it was extremely well done, extremely usable video, even though there was some noise showing up. Another thing that I noticed that was really irritating to me was the continuous autofocus. What it did was continuously, because that's what it does, continuously was seeking a subject and trying to focus on it. And what you get in the video is this noise, which is the lens going back and forth all the time. If you're using a microphone like I'm doing for this video, that's probably not gonna be an issue. However, it still was annoying to watch because the camera was constantly moving in, moving out, tweaking the focus a little bit because it was trying to track a subject. It wasn't, in my opinion, it wasn't very good. Now, if we go back to the quality, I do wanna mention that while they both looked visually the same, very good quality, in regular light and in the moderately low light situation, there was an interesting difference when I really, really shot in extreme low light. I went into this room, pitch black room down in a basement. The only light in the room was an exit sign and the light coming down the stairs through the open door of the room. And here, interestingly enough, the D7000 picked up more light and more detail in the exact same situation than the D7100 did. Now, you should realize that at ISO 6400, this video was incredibly noisy and the quality was unusable in my opinion. So I wouldn't recommend shooting at ISO 6400 anyway. One thing I should say is that overall, both of these cameras are great cameras, okay? I've said that before and I'll say it again, they're both very good cameras. But you're wondering, some of you anyway, are wondering which one of these cameras should I buy? In terms of image quality, the D7100 is the clear winner here. So if you need quality images, go with the D7100, especially if you're shooting in low light. That's really where the D7100 stood out against the D7000. Now, if you don't shoot low light at all, and you wanna save some money, then get the D7000. You'll get a good camera that will perform very, very well in good lighting conditions. But if you want top-notch image quality, get the D7100. When it comes to video, as I said before, 
if you're if you're serious about shooting video and like that's your primary purpose frankly i don't think i'd recommend either one of these cameras i'd look at something different if you need an slr that shoots video then in terms of pure quality the d7100 is better as we said it can do 1080p at 30 frames per second so if you need that then it's a no-brainer it's the d7100 however in terms of shooting performance both of them were identical until you get to that extremely, extremely low light situation where the D7000 is a little bit better. But all in all, based on everything, I personally would choose the D7100 if I was looking to buy one of these two cameras because I do shoot in low light and I do want excellent image quality. I do shoot video, but my video, I don't need that super, super low light performance. I've got my lights here. I'm shooting in a controlled condition. I don't have to worry about the quality when I'm trying to push 6400 ISO for video. That's all I've got for you today. If you have questions, you know how to do it. In the comments, selfhelpphotographer.com slash submit. Hop over to my Facebook page, wherever. Send me your questions because I want to answer them for you. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. And most importantly, get out there and take some damn photos with whatever camera you've got.